scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. You represent the presence of God in our midst. Oh, yes, Lord, we honor you. Great is the measure of your royalty in our midst. We acknowledge you because you are mighty. Lord, we bless you. Bless our hearts tonight. Let Jesus be magnified. Let Jesus be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody again tonight, especially for those who have come from far and near. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. It takes love for God to travel all the way down. And for those of you standing outside, we love you, we acknowledge you. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pay attention tonight to what I'm about to teach because I believe that the truths contained in this revelation will set our hearts on fire and will cause us to be instruments of revival, will cause us to be carriers of the anointing. Like Mary said when she was up here, she said the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference and in this season of revival where the fire of God is sweeping across it's important for us to understand that there is an alignment on our own path and tonight's teaching is an attempt to position us so that we'll be mightily used by God hallelujah There's nothing more frustrating um, to a man, to a believer, like um, having a prolonged period of work with God without an evidence. I call them consolations of your work with God. Now, I've taught us primarily that we do not seek God for anointing, for cars, for miracles, etc. However, in the process of our work with God, it is important that our lives begin to bear fruit, produce results that motivate us to keep pressing into Him. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to share what I truly believe by the Spirit is the hunger and the questions and the desire in the heart of many people as to why certain people are mightily used by God and others seem not to be used by God or just in little dimensions 
I'll be sharing with you something very simple and very profound. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray. and Say, Lord, open my eyes. Please pray. Everyone, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see. Lord, I don't just want to look. I really want to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just returned from a pastor's conference and... Um, yesterday was an awesome time and while i taught in that conference i felt a need to share some of the things that um, were communicated in that meeting because i believe that is very instrumental is is a teaching that will respond to our hunger and our desire for god hallelujah now many of us at one point or the other have had questions as to why God seems to use certain individuals very mightily when you look at any territory you find out that there are certain individuals that um, it seems God is doing business with them as far as the dispensing of his life and power and truth they seem to be pivot in what God is doing and yet there are others who are Christians, believers, but they always seem to be out of God's program. It looks like they don't weigh so much as far as the agenda of God is concerned. And this has brought a lot of frustration in the body of Christ because a lot of people have gone into different kinds of spiritual exercises in an attempt to upgrade themselves to become usable. But then I think that the true ingredients required to carry the power of God to be relevant as far as the move of God is concerned, many people do not seem to sustain it. So I want to just talk on three things and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I've seen people pray for days and hours, hard vigils in an attempt to get the anointing in an attempt to gain spiritual power, in an attempt to access the mysteries of the world. And while that is not, um, it's not useless, but then for many people, their disappointment is that at the end of all of that program, there is still a void and there is still a barrenness. Are we together now? So they fast, they add fasting to it. I mean, there is no time in the church where men fast and pray as it is right now are we together there are ministries that literally do vigils every day every day marathon vigils for one month at a stretch yet you watch the quality of the believers that are produced from that experience and it's a cause for concern there are people who are i would call them fasting giants hallelujah and there are people who have stretched their human capacity from border to border. I know a man who I prayed for who fasted for seven days dry. Dry fast. I don't mean maybe you take juice later on and then you keep moving. Dry like nothing touches your mouth. Not even a toothbrush. This is how people have stretched in the spirit in an attempt to be used by God. The highest I've seen in my life is someone who fasted for 400 days. 400 days, non-stop. Hallelujah. I rounded the 400 day with him and I prayed with him. But as far as I know, that gentleman is still searching desperately for the power of God till now. What then is the missing link? Please pay attention to what i'm about to teach you because for some of you this will be the key that god will hand to you holy 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 
Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy The latest in the series of the pursuit right now is searching for the vessels that carry the anointing. I mean, once you are anointed, you are in trouble. Everywhere people see you, whether in the market, somewhere, I mean, there are all kinds of skills that are employed from those who fly and hold your leg and say, kill me, but let the anointing drop to those who will drop a seed, those who will use handkerchiefs to clean your shoes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against... Um, the expressions of their passion but i'm saying that people are desperate for the power of god and the glory of god but it looks like god is mising the power it looks like there are people who are saying lord empower me i mean give me this miracle working power this ability and 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 all of that i know so many pastors so many ministers who cry for the grace and the glory of God upon their lives they want his presence to be experienced in their meetings this that I'm about to teach you the Lord taught me 10 years ago as the secret of his sustaining presence and power upon the life of a man the Lord told me to do this and his presence and his power Will remain upon my life and by the grace of god i have followed this thoroughly i have struggled to teach what i'm teaching you people this night because i've taught us that it is wasteful to supply information to people who are not spiritually prepared to receive hallelujah while i saw the gentleman who came and said they came all the way from niger state and the ones from makodi I am very humbled to see what God is doing through these messages within this country and in various parts of the world. But there is a secret to it. This is what I want us to understand. There is nothing that is happening that is a mistake. There's nothing that is happening that is haphazard. And if you will pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please, even those who are working, workers and all of that, do your work, but please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. So why is the power of God absent? Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like, it, it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one. I, I, I consider this... I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man your motif and your motivation your motif and your motivation let me tell you something I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people 
well-meaning people who want to see the miraculous power of God they want to be mightily used by God lack this one thing the motif and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning so every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing are we together from those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming and they console themselves by saying let's go to the vineyard and use ministry to build a career corrupted motives are we together to those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures you were growing up and they told you that you'll be a failure in life and now you're saying lord give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that i'm not a failure as well-meaning as that motif is it is corrupted are we together now that's the reason why you find certain people they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion fasting prayer but it seems like god has so much interest in them he will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life motif your motivation i can tell you this and i tell you sincerely eight or nine out of every ten pastors and men of god that call me send me text messages sow seeds and are desperately looking for anointing and grace most of them their motives are corrupted are we together so i can go for 40 days fasting but god looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive this for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people that god does business with and that he will do business with in these days is god speaking to us the state of your heart let's look at a few scriptures john chapter 12 Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, and Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where lazarus who had been dead who was raised from the dead and the bible says there they made unto him supper and martha served follow carefully but lazarus was one of them that sat at table now let's watch something that happened and then mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet the bible says okay took a pound of ointment of spikenard pure nard very costly take note very costly then the bible says that she anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair are we together and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment and then something happened verse 4 and then one of his disciples a man called judas iscariot simon's son which should betray him he responded to that act of worship verse 5 why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor 
Now watch this. This is part of Jesus' ministerial cabinet. A woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet. Pure nerd. The Bible tells us it was her wages for one year and she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet and then when other people when Jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman the sincere communication of her appreciation someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage are we together but he never said you wasted this he tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house are we together and this is what he said verse 5 please let's go back to verse 5 why was not this ointment sold so for him you can still worship jesus another way go and sell it bring the money let's add to the treasury but his motive was so that he will have more money to be stealing are we together it was never about jesus it was never about his desire to see his master exalted are we together now judas had no business listen although he was a sincere person he wanted to use jesus the moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself being elected the treasurer he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry he would help himself so you would see judas at every crusade you would see judas attending to the poor collecting all the seeds to jesus you would look from that experience and say what a zealous man the first to appear in every crusade ground the one to respond to the necessity of jesus but the motive behind it was his belly are we together the next verse verse 6 this he said not that he what cared for the poor the bible says but because he was a that was his mo the motive he was looking for more money so he could steal so he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for god the bible says and he had the back and bear what was put therein. in other words if they changed judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made thomas or peter the new treasurer all of a sudden he would not care about any sacrifice again are we together this is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people you would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people you would see them pray for prosperity as though they really really want to help and bless people you would see them fast as they they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate you would think they care so much about the people coming but at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered demonic and many times satanic motivation are we together now how many men of god use the anointing use members use so many people to boost their ego and when they go around you see pastors gather to talk and you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion have you seen my members have you seen the jeep that this one bought for me there are 20 oil company workers in my church there are senators in my church there are this and that and that i mean we grew from 5000 to 20000 in one year great news but then what is the motivation behind it and so we use those things to scorn others we use those things to command honor when pastors come together the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by god motive motivation 
Judas was doing what physically would have been a wise suggestion. I can understand his passion because he was in the finance department. Are we together? And so from financially speaking, it would have been a still a worthy way of worship to sell it and bring the money and then the money be given to the poor. But the problem was the motivation behind that statement. Not necessarily what he said. The motivation behind it was wrong. Brothers and sisters, you can fast all you can. You can pray all you can. You can carry bottles of anointing oil, carry handkerchiefs and mantles, go and fly on the man of God's bed and roll there from night till morning. When this adjustment of the state of your heart is not in place, forget about God doing business with you, especially in this end time. Are we together? Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2. Solomon, who was a wise man, said something that is very interesting. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 is projected. He said, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighed the spirit. Can we have any other version? Just any other available one that renders something differently. The Lord tests the motives. He judges the content, the motivation. It says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the Lord weighs the spirit the thoughts and the intents of the heart in other words if I get up right now and I tell this lady to stand up and I lay hands on her and she falls under the anointing while you are clapping and say man this guy is anointed God is not impressed with that experience until he scans the motive behind it if the motive behind it was to prove a point to a few people that the anointing is still alive that experience has been corrupted as far as god's standard is concerned are we together you can raise 10 people from wheelchair and in heaven you raise only one from the second to the last the motive cancelled it by zero are we together now look when you understand this you will focus more on motive than physical experiences because it's difficult for men to discern because men judge by the outward appearance how many pastors frustrate themselves how many people frustrate themselves they think they want power they think they want grace but god has already seen the true content of their heart You will think when they are anointed, they will spend their lives serving God. You will think when they are anointed, they spend their lives. Listen, I go for meetings and thank God for the honor here and there. Different people have their ways of responding. And while I step into the meetings to sit down, I see all kinds of admiration. You see a lot of young people bouncing on the floor, happy and just wishing and say oh god give me what you have given this person and i can sense in my spirit the field of their motives they want to be celebrities and since they cannot run like you saying bolt since they cannot play tennis like the williams they feel ministry is a cheaper route to achieve the same thing and god says no sir no sir no sir anna wanted a child i've taught us she wanted a child so desperately but her motive was to prove to Penina that she also had a womb and she kept going to Shiloh to pray and God never had it listen this is very scary a woman who wanted to prove she went to the house of God and cried and God said it's not enough reason for you to have a child until she gave up and said Lord this is not about Penina again I align my will to you she prayed once and a child came once 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 so many people want crowd they want power they want revelation 80 percent of the text messages that people send to me what is the secret of your anointing what is the secret of your grace what is this thing in these teachings that transform people 
let me tell you it's beyond prayer it's beyond fasting the motif of your heart is greater is the foundation upon which any true spiritual experience is accepted before God this already is a deliverance for somebody hearing me because it's, it's a call for you to find out you have been engaging sincerely in many spiritual attempts but you may never find the power of God until your motif the state of your heart is aright the sincerity and the love that you have for God and his people the sincerity and the love that you have how sincere is your motive as far as God is concerned and the sheep of his pasture the Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life he does not stand on the sheep so that they will see him a good shepherd is not one who prays in tongues a good shepherd is not just one who walks in miracles a good shepherd lays down his life constrains himself inconveniences himself for the success the progress how many pastors do that how many pastors rejoice that God is lifting people how many pastors rejoice you see when you understand this you will at once listen at once I remember one time I think I was I, I, I don't know where exactly and we we're sitting down and one pastor I was talking with a group of pastors and then somebody passed and then they tapped in and said that's that's apostle the apostle Joshua Selman you've been hearing about that's him and he came around and sat down in less than 10 minutes this man was telling me oh he bought his suit so 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 amount God has been faithful in the ministry they've been seeing all kinds of explosion and later I asked the other person I said sorry what is the membership strength of this church we're talking about here and it was not even up to 35 are we together now so you see that this person came and was talking like this in hope to get honor and respect because he has been taught that when you try to create that picture and you package yourself and make it look like look i'm an overseer i'm not just a pastor i need you to know that i'm overseeing something you need to realize that there are people under me there are pastors around you say oh really we see what god is doing please let me advise you get out of those wrong and devilish associations i'm telling you this you may be criticized but it's better to be criticized than do business with god you never find me in a company of all this rubbish by the grace of god no i never look down on any man whether you are pastoring one church or two churches and i never give you any unnecessary honor whether you are pastoring one million people are we together now There are certain people here, if God will give you one-tenth of the anointing you are crying for, God will have to summon prayer warriors to pray for your salvation, not even the church again, just to make sure that your salvation is protected. Are we together? So many people. We have seen many people let's use the music industry for instance we have seen people who when they started they they ran around pastors pray for me give me anointing give me this and that and the moment god lifts them a little they change in a way that you will not imagine are we together now and you find out that their motivation is no longer the passion for god it is where honorarium will come where the paycheck is fattest is where the holy spirit is directing them are we together so if they give you administration in one small youth fellowship or where there are 30 zealous youths genuinely hungry for god and they give you another invitation in victoria island where you are flying business class are we together now and a range rover sports is what is receiving you from the airport to the hotel and you sit down and calculate you say i've suffered in this life even god knows i've suffered in this life then you take all kinds of selfies and snapshots of yourself 
and send it and write on that God is faithful. God is faithful, yes, but the motive behind that statement is corrupt. What you are really saying is watch my life and be intimidated. You are not saying, you are just using a Christian term. Are we together? Motif. I watch with pain in my heart because I know that God is still looking for men and women. There is no man of God that can bring the revival we are talking about single-handedly. The best of any man is an effective member. God is looking for an army, not a person. If it looks like there is only one person, it's because many people are not ready. It's not because God is mising his grace. I tell you this. So many people praying and crying, use me, oh God. Let me change my territory. Use me as an agent of revival. All kinds of people trying to play all kinds of gimmicks to see the power of God come. But when he searches their hearts, he sees that their motives are not right. How many ladies want to marry men of God? You would think it's because they, are, they care about the burden of the vineyard. You would think they love the man and say, oh God, let me live my life ministering to this man. The way they talk, you will be motivated. You say, you can imagine her passion. Have you eaten, sir? Have you really eaten? Are you okay? Huh? you have been losing weight these days are you okay but the truth of it is it's not any passion for any sheep is that the last time they checked their television and saw how mama looked mama of whichever ministry it was admirable people will come and kneel down before you and say mommy just speak a word and drop a check and they say if this is what mama represents i'm, I'm up for it i mean i i take it with all gladness and gratitude so it makes the sister to always establish her presence in the prayer meeting. When there is Bible study, the sister is there. Are we together? When there is any fasting program, she's there. She comes fasting but holds cooler for the pastor. Now, there's nothing wrong with cooler ministry. It's very useful. Uh, come on, very, very useful. Are we together? So that I don't make ladies punish a lot of pastors from... Do what God has asked you to do to the man of God. Are we together? When food finished for Elijah, when Elijah's food finished and water dried, God sent him immediately to a woman to take care of him. So that ministry is very biblical. Are we together? Motivation. How many people in church are looking for ordination and PA? So, and they are the first to come and greet the pastor in the morning pastor how are you I want to tell you what is happening in this church it's like you have been very busy but I've been covering for you I can, I can tell you exactly what has been happening the last time you went there is a stubborn lady in the worship team I don't know exactly it's not happening here I can tell you at least not, not to this level praise the Lord so I can give this example generally speaking and then once you talk you now say pastor uh, there's a message that I prepared anytime you are not free you are busy I can always stand in for you at the conference or the crusade you will look at this guy and believe that he's very zealous the pastor will say I really have someone covering my back but it's because this person went and met his uncle and the uncle said the job is not coming and he sat down and calculated and said, which one is the fastest route to establishment? Masters, PhD, I can start up a business. It will take five years before it will be established. But if I partner with this man, I'm sure that in six months, God will wipe my tears. So he comes. And you will find unusual passion. Are we together? Motive. Whenever you see a man who is very close to the anointing, and never receives it his motive stopped him from receiving that's what happened to Gehazi by the grace of God when you see the heads of departments of this ministry and many people and other people who are connected to this ministry when you look at the life of those who are connected in reality 
you even those who have never seen my face you will see a reproduction of grace i have met people in meetings i sat down and i thought i was hearing myself i was like my goodness who is this guy but there are others who are around the anointing around but their motif oh look let me tell you something about god he is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents hallelujah elisha worked with elijah for a very long time he would have been i mean um, um gehazi he would have been prophet gehazi but you can see his motif one time naaman came and when naaman was healed elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go and naaman like judas you see it now Naaman said, we can't let this thing just go like that. And he ran after him and said, wait, my master just changed his mind. Can you offload some of these things? I will handle it. And when he came back, he just kept quiet like nothing happened. And Elisha looked at him and said, was my spirit not with you? Sometimes members in church are really foolish. If a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage, and see what is happening in the lives of people what makes you believe he cannot discern your motive are we together when i talk to pastors and i counsel them and they bring me problems maybe them assistants um, other people around are fighting i look at them and i say come on now are you not anointed where did you keep the anointing do you drop it just at the altar can you not discern Everyone say motif. Say it again, motif. Your motif and your motivation. Sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ. Sincerity. Sincerity of motif is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives. Sincerity of motive. Our motives are perverted. Our motives are corrupted. I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one. When he told me he had met Ben Hinn one on one, I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes. He thought it was a testimony. I said, I can't understand. What are you saying? He said, truly. He was in a program. He happened to be like a PA or some, not PA, but you know, those who are, see, please, if you are close to a man of God, go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity you can be the closer you are to a man of god the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in are we together now motif motif i never get too familiar with the holy spirit I love him. The Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me. But at every point, I make sure that that sense of honor, that my motif is always aright. When I'm praying for a meeting, oh Lord, I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting. He sees my heart and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name. I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time, listen, and I'm talking to all of us, especially for those who are pastors. When was the last time your motif was aright? You see why David was called a man after God's heart? David would say, search my heart. Not search my throne. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. Because my heart can be deceitful. So many people have missed out on the will of God. 
that's the reason why you find out that in many churches after a while people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative when you call somebody and say promise go and work in welfare ken work in prayer department mama work in ushery mama says ushery it's me now that you are giving ushery this guy is in prayer department at least the honorarium there's a possibility of honorarium coming welfare there's no possibility of any honorarium coming are we together have you seen people lobby for positions in church you've seen that happen this is the reason they find you know how a funnel is when you pour water the funnel moves in a direction and so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing and they leech themselves around that place and god sees their hearts says your motif is corrupted i like you to in a very sincere way listen cry out and ask the lord to search your motif for desiring his presence for desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know yeah search me through and through till my heart becomes when was the last time you listen to a man of God, his prayer content, and you had him praying and crying for the sheep. Oh God, bless these people. Oh God, increase them. If it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me live. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motif and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy and you see the desire you see the desire you i mean you see the hunger every time they say a man of god is coming to town you see so many people they go and sit in front you would think they want the anointing for a clean motive sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors I told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep it shows that you don't care about them every time I come in for koinonia and I see crowds of people and I see people standing if I see just one person standing I can feel it in my heart sometimes i'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say look we are doing our best there is only so much we can do i i feel as though i should stand and let the people i i just would not interrupt the work of the various departments but i see it especially when we are done and i see people leaving and where we are going and i see some people trekking in groups happily through the night 
my heart is moved listen compassion is a big key to walking in the anointing compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people it's the secret to the anointing are we together if Sam is sick right now and I come to Sam and I lay hands on Sam and Sam is not healed I lay hands on Sam and Sam is not healed I will carry Sam by myself to Shika because I am so interested in his healing my ego notwithstanding but a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave Sam to die are we together so that it will be through his hand how many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church are we together how many people will dare not give a testimony about what god used another man of god to do in their life before the overseer he says so you are trying to say i'm not anointed now honor your man of god respect him don't come and cause trouble between pastors but at the same time any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors that's the truth about it but it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth the pastor will not in fact it's not even the pastor there is already a system to punish disloyalty are we together motif motif and some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now the moment somebody comes and says wow god bless me with this revelation and it did not come from you all of a sudden you start looking and say how oh, are we sure it's correct let me see it motive if what you want is celebration and being a celebrity if that is your prime if you just want celebrity please go and act for him if you want the anointing if you want to serve god genuinely your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty in this place. I worship you, King of Kings. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motive. I say it again. Align your motive for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motive for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motive. Align your motive. Motive is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people what is the state of your heart i know you are well meaning but what is the state of your heart sister it's not like god cannot give you a great man of god to marry but what is the motive behind your heart if the motive of your heart is to serve god and to stand by that man to be a blessing to partner with him to lift up the banner of christ in the nations i guarantee you god will not withhold it from you but if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around 
and look like you are more than other ladies and so Ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it I will help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because God is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God he gave the blood of his very son for it and so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this I want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. I began to pray recently and I was asking the Lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of Christ don't last and the Lord showed me something that scared me I want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us. Please open your eyes and let me teach you something. Watch this. If I'm holding money, so I have your attention now. Come, sir. Watch this. If Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area, are we together now? And then he comes to meet me as a man of God. And I tell him, Michael, give me 1,000 naira and I will pray for you. And I will sow a seed. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you just cancel that spiritual transaction. Anointing will never, has never been an instrument in exchange for money. Are we together now? I can bless him. Listen, let me tell you why many people, especially many young pastors and young prophets, are fraud. Their, their lives look like they are fake. Some of them are not fake. The truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of God. No, sir. It's God speaking to us. I can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life he can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book a pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project that's all right but where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft if you are doing it here stop it now let me tell you now stop it not later now stop it between you and god let it never happen you will never see the power of god that way remember in the book of acts the gentleman who wanted to buy power from peter and he said your money perish with you pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit i know we need money ministries need money don't get me wrong i know i know that pastors need money they have families but not to compromise with the anointing the anointing will bring you money big time people will surprise you but it's not going to be this way are we together all those things where you carry offering basket and as i heal you you drop your own whether you call it free will or whatever if it came in demand for the anointing brothers and sisters if you ever saw result it was the mercy of god not a justification of what happened this is one thing that i've seen that is eating people in the church you do not use the anointing for merchandise no you will be blessed you will be changed look let me tell you bless people and allow them to decide to honor you they will surprise you how much can i charge you for a breakthrough how much can i charge you for miracles let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you i ask you to pay me ten thousand twenty thousand let's even assume that i ask you to pay me fifty thousand and you bring it i have received wages not favor wages but by the time i bless you and i leave you to the god that sent me 
he himself will move you and you will come with one million naira ten times what i would have demanded and you will bless me it's impossible to be a true servant of god and bless people without god moving them to bless you it's no it never happens if nobody is blessing you it's because your anointing is not notable enough are we together this is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry because it seems like it's working someone gets into ministry and in four months he has 10 jeeps he raised offering for himself and 10 people gave and there are rich people you see people are desperate so whatever i said i beg please take the jeep and heal me i'm tired of all this trouble but god is watching and you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels and god says i can't take you international with this attitude you will misrepresent me your motif is corrupted there have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry especially seeds of kinds and when they bring it because i never use them but i just bless them and we release it sometimes we give it to people sometimes we honor the workers with it i look at it when i see maybe especially gadgets or some things and i find out that it's very expensive and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever i'm even moved and i say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but i have not once not twice i've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and i pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us your hand is in a mode to collect consistently it doesn't matter how it comes no that's not the way god blesses people in the kingdom is god helping us to examine motives motives how many pastors have trouble rich men in their church visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed i, I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing the anointing is provoked yes but it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power, anytime, listen, it's not even every giving that is worth collecting. When you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright, you honorably decline. There are people who give you in such a way that the day you, as you collect it, you throw away your honor. Preserve the, how much is 10 naira, how much is 20 naira, tea and bread, and you lose everything because of it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing i hate the way we talk about money all the time in church it, it can, i mean have you seen men of god who preach a very solid message solid message and when the spirit of the people are lifted it, it just now coins they say in conclusion there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story. Because this story would demand a, a response. There was a man, and then so on and so forth. And they tell you all the story. And at the end of it, the man now says, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of that. And um, you, I'm going to bless you stand here with five thousand not if god is leading you or if you are led to sow ten thousand you 
you are a rich man. You can't bring 5,000 for me. Stand here with 10,000. And the moment you start doing that, you may not be fake, but you are driving the, the, the fire of God from your life. And if you don't take time, it will become Ichabod, the departure of the glory. That's why certain men of God, eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be sincere and to be true. I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motive. How many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others? They are tired though, but because they saw another colleague, they fire on. On a very good day, they would have rested if the person is not there. I've seen people who pray and they are sleeping. Once they hear the door, they just stop. To mean you should come and see me. In the... Look, 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 look. Don't play games with the anointing. You must be true if you want the power of God. Number two. You want to carry the glory of God upon your life. Your level of passion and hunger for God. Your level of passion and hunger. There's a song in my spirit. She's your mentor now. Come and sing it if you know. Spirit, lead me where my truth. Let me walk upon the waters. You know the song? That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. In the presence of my Savior, Spirit, lead me where my trust is in our borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will come. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Your level of passion and hunger. Brothers and sisters, seeking God is a full-time pursuit. There's nothing like part-time seeking God. Are we together? No, you don't seek God part-time. You don't seek God with your spare time, sorry. You don't seek God with the remaining time you have. After you make money, after you marry, after you give birth to children, the balance of it, you now say, oh yeah, God, take. No, no, no. The jealousy of God fights anything that is above him. Even if it's what he gave you, he will still fight it. Listen, God can give you a thing that he will still fight it tomorrow. The moment it rises above him, his jealousy begins to fight it immediately. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, take that word very seriously. Your passion. Psalm 42 verse 2. Listen. Pursuit is the proof of passion. Pursuit is the proof of passion. Every time you have passion towards anything, you will seek it 
and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for god my soul thirsted for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god this is the psalmist a psalm communicating passion are we together if this is my wife if this is my wife watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place i should run and give her a big hug and say sweetheart i missed you how are you just me what has happened passion if a call is coming i ignore the call because i'm trying to communicate passion if you must be prompted to love god and to seek god it's because you are not passionate enough anything you are passionate about you have time for it my brother, that's why this night after Koinonia, as late as it is, you are still going to escort the lady to her room. The reason is because you have passion. Are we together? There are brothers after Koinonia right now. They will even enter bus. There is a fire they themselves cannot explain. They say, let's go. What is bus? It will kill the time we have for our discussion. And the lady stands. Brothers and sisters from here to North Gate will look like five minutes. And they say, we are even here. That's passion. But let, let me tell you to escort somebody you don't have any, a man. Let me ask you to escort your colleague. By the time you get to that shop, you say, are you biking or we are walking? Because you love the person, Jesus' brotherly love, but there is no passion. That fire is not there. Have you seen a lady, 12.30, the guy is shaking and he says, let me try flashing her. He flashes once and she pits. He says, I'm sorry. Let me start by apologizing. He says, for what? He say, I, you, you sound sleepy. He says, I was just stretching. But the truth is, she was sleeping. Everybody say passion. Say fire. That's the name of that experience. If you don't have that thing, listen, listen. If as you are sitting down right now, this is not your feeling for God, you need a retreat. I'm telling you the truth. It's a sign don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream. You need a retreat very quickly. Fire. That's what it takes. There must be an obsession. That's the word, really. If you are not yet obsessed about God, forget about His power in your life. It must be an obsession. And, by the way, let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling if you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere careless easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses Watch how people act and treat football. Man you is about to play match 3.30. By 2 o'clock, the person is there with singlet. Already arguing. Are we together? Arguing one hour before the time. And then they sit down in the place of argument and they say, if you did not start watching football from 1993, don't join us. Because you don't even know what it is. We need somebody with a historical perspective. And they are arguing. And the person is mentioned. It's called passion. The moment the match starts, the person is in front. Sweating but remaining there. Thirsty but remaining there. Are we together? A point comes, there are guys, there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say, I'm not going out. This sweat, we will die here with this sweat. I must watch this match. It's called passion. Now come to the house of God and see the coldness. The coldness the coldness 
when an average believer tries to show that I'm a little serious with God, we just say, Pastor, are we together? Or Mama, it's a shame. Bless you. It's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about God. Until your love for God makes someone around you uncomfortable, you don't love God enough yet. That someone can look at you and say, Kai, talk, well, carry your madness and leave my presence. Every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in. Are we together? Less as fair, lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life. There is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit. I'm chasing after you no matter what. You know the song? I will keep bringing songs that I in my spirit. I don't know the song so much, but if you can help me, any one of you, if you don't know it. I'm chasing after you no matter More and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. It's important. To what degree do you seek Him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what he has done to me, but I pray he will do it to you. Amen. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No. Anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some? No! Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heartbeat for God. More and more. 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 Psalm 69 verse 9. Let me show you something very powerful. There is a term I've seen in the Bible but I've hardly studied it. Hardly studied it. But I studied it recently and I was amazed. Everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9. One to read. For the zeal of thine house had eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me. Listen, let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to Him that they can see. So the anger they have for Him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love Him. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says the zeal. This was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The zeal of thy house has consumed me. The zeal of thy house. That a man can be so consumed with the things of God. It has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not. zeal the zeal of the lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly listen listen when was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again because you are thinking about the kingdom you are thinking about his majesty something about him now you have me and now i'm forever changed i've abandoned Everything I've ever known Now 
I surrender My life is not mine You are everything Everything is you You are everything Everything is you You are the first, the last, beginning and the end In you I live and have my being There is absolutely nothing you can do Absolutely nothing compares to you I don't know the other part But you are everything you are everything. everything is you You are everything Everything is you. Sing it to him from your heart. He is everything. He's everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money, until you love Him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17, when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple, they remembered that the zeal of the Lord, zeal is like an anointing. It will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go. Zeal. The same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says, sorry, why are you here? He say, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for grace. He say, is it compulsory? It's late. He say, please. If you will not support my agenda, leave this place. Because the rain is not in. Say, what is rain? Am I sick? It's called zeal. If you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know? Every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally, as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed. I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia, but the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you. That it will make you passionate so that when you get a job you will not leave him are we together so that when you marry you will not leave him so that when you no longer have prayer points do you know it is possible god will solve your problem there is no personal prayer point what then will you do when he solved everything the reason why many people are drawing after him i'm telling you this sincerely is because of the load of problems they have If God solves all your problems, will you still seek him? If, there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love him? I can understand why you love him because you need him for your defense next week. You need him for graduation. You are trusting he will manipulate the result in a way that you will live and be in peace. So I can understand your sin. But what happens? Listen. You always know those who never had zeal for God by their commitment after God meets their needs. Not before he meets it. After. When a lady is looking for a husband desperately, I can understand why you are around for night vigil. But what if a husband comes? And a rich one. And then, 
One month after your marriage, you are pregnant. Every testimony you want has been given. And to hell with God until another problem comes. Shade is here with her kids, raising them. She's been like this for many years in this ministry, way before marriage. Raising her kids. Her son is very interesting. He can mimic me almost verbatim. This boy you are saying. Take it or this and that and in his own little way, but he's growing. Some of us, it took the grace of God to drag you back to the house of God. The money you got before has finished. So you came. You, you came in the name of thanksgiving, but the truth is, you are only thanking God because you are aware that in the next two weeks, whether you thank him or not, there's going to be a problem. And so you have come to the house of God. I love him whether he answers my prayer or not. I love him whether he ever anoints me or not. Koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God. The results in my life are too small a reason. Fall in love with him to that extent. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again. Falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Again and again. Psalm 63. Verse 1 and 3. Fall in love with him. And you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways. Fall in love with him genuinely. Beyond the need for things. Give me tea. Give me bread. Fall in love with him genuinely. And I'm telling you, you will see God answer your thoughts before they become prayer points. Psalm 63. Oh God. Thou art my God. Not our God. My God. Early. Early. I'm so passionate about you. When I wake up, you are my obsession. And so I seek you early. My soul thirsts for thee. My body, my flesh longs after you. Do you know lust is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards God? Lust. Lust. What you call lust. Immorality. Lust is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner. But because the person is standing where God is, so you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. And say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. Most times when I go back after koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is 
is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. God does not want an affair. Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. and I long to worship you. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship I want to talk about the third point but the Holy Spirit is stopping me because these points that I've said enough God wants to do something in our midst this thing has pleased the Lord this thing I have taught I know when the Lord is pleased over something would you just pray and just pray in the spirit this is well pleasing to the Lord tonight it's an incense of worship it's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Would you dance voices would you dance with me oh lava of my soul to the song of all songs oh he can make your ministry powerful I tell you would you dance with me Lava of my soul to the song of all songs. Would you dance with me? Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Would you dance with me? The love around my soul. Hallelujah. 
Listen. This is the secret of my life. I love him. And I pursue him. I seek him as a job. I seek his presence as a full-time assignment. Let me tell you the secret of power. Beyond your fasting and your prayer, have a genuine motive. No matter how wrong you are, let your motive be true. No matter what you don't know, let your motive be true. Your motive is greater than your actions. Your motives are stronger than your actions. And then seek him. Seek him. You will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love. Listen, listen, listen. If these two kids are my children, by the time I'm done, you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with Apostle. All they know is Father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after Koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. They just pass you and rush to come and hug me. They are coming to hug their father. They have no business with whether, whatever. To them, it's not apostle. To them, it's someone they love. Take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality. Come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come. Pass the place where prayer warriors stop. Pass the place where fasting giants stop. Past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber is a place where only lovers enter. Even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber. Even fasting giants don't enter. The Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard and it has not occurred in the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. Them that are obsessed. Listen. You will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring result. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say, open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together? The apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy. Being naked and unashamed. Are we together? If you do not get to that point where you can be open to God and naked and unashamed, there is deceit somewhere in your relationship. If I'm going out with you and I password some messages in my phone and I'm afraid of you accessing it, listen, Confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together? Genuine passion. We are going to pray. God is going to visit us very briefly. But we are going to pray. To worship you I live. To worship you I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh.
give me you everything else can wait give me you I don't care what it is it must wait Lord give me you relationship can wait jobs can wait anointing can wait give me you five to ten minutes there will be a very strange impartation in this place this is why the Lord stopped me and listen aside from several activations that will happen one of the major impartation that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways listen listen many of you what will happen to you tonight it will become as if you have become a madman something will come upon you something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions proportions that you have never seen it's a dimension of love i keep falling in love with you i keep falling in love with you falling in love with you Again and again, I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again, I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. One more time. Yeah, I keep falling in love with you. More than ministry. More than the desire for power. More than the desire for fame and greatness. Lift your hands. I tell you something mighty will happen to you the zeal of the Lord 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 ta, 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 ta. the zeal of the Lord will consume you it will eat you up like a cancer As I begin to sing, it will be like an impartation from my left to my right and outside. It's like an initiation to a realm of love. And now I am desperate for you. Go ahead, oh great one and bring your seal upon people and I, yeah. Yeah. And I, lift your hands Father, I pray, let a strange anointing fall upon your people. At the count of three, there will be mighty impartation, love for God. It will come heavy upon you. One, two, three, take it now. Take it now. Take it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Everywhere in this place. 
take it right now fire is a fire and a seal for God is a fire and a seal for God a fire a passion for the house of God a passion for the things of God pray just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. Lord let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me your hands lift your hands I hear my spirit visions and dreams visions and dreams a mantle for visions and dreams prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place Lord right now where are those people let that mantle fall upon them visions and dreams take it now take it now take it now take it now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus visions and dreams you will hear his voice in the night visions and dreams ha 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm hearing my spirit spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion in lives and mysteries. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle, like an anointing that gives precision. As many people who are supposed to walk in this, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus, visit them right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 When your motive is right and true and when you seek him with your all like the deer pants after the water brook, unashamedly, unembarrassingly, then the stage is clear for you to catch true fire. Then the stage is clear for you to carry a mantle that no man can deny. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want those who came visiting to come out. I want to minister to them. Those who came visiting, specifically from maybe other places, pastors and all of that. I usually don't do this. I want you to stand with your heart hungry and desperate. Hungry and genuinely desperate to go back with an encounter. carry something heavy believe me you will carry a strange order of grace help them you will carry something mighty that you will take back to your regions 
strange levels of fire and anointing deep fountains of encounters Stretch your hands towards them as I lay my hands on them. Father, let something come upon our visitors in the name of Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands on you, something mighty comes upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it and go with it. Take it and go with it. learn this. Be ever joyful. Don't jump today and dance and rejoice and five minutes later after service you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition. Not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice, First Kings 17 from verse 7. Or oh, really, verse, verse, verse 1, to, 1 to 6, 1 Kings 17, we we'll read. If we do not have time, 17. And it came to pass after a while, he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. 
And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now, make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience luxury today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to define the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion. The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. 
What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this, but in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you, but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest. Though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. 
I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that would bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. Said, ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Ko were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, Well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, This is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and non deliverance for a spoil and there is no advocate that prophesies to them restore for you to ever experience restoration there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life the prophetic the prophetic either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect you have to understand what I'm teaching you without an encounter with a prophetic grace a prophetic office or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God there is no restoration it's impossible second scripture Psalm 119 verse 49 I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you cause me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough. I believed it and 
I say, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham, a sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. 2 Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. 2 Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It is a God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is 
only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen, you are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21, I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha, he said rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate 
the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and pray. say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help, my help, my help. My father has died. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move. He's dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. He will always be alive. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weak knot when the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. Is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I, he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is and return me. Hallelujah. Listen, what 
going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already communicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call.
very fast. I'm seeing shoes in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is telling me people will wear them now. This is a sign of restoration too. Lord, where are they? Let it happen now. There is a grace for performance. Grace for performance. Please bring them out quickly. Please, ushers, you should know this. We are saving time. Please, quickly. He says, grace for performance right now. In the name of Jesus.
look at me. The past has a way of wanting to relieve itself in your present. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past? I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. forgetting. I know you failed but forgetting. There is a spirit that keeps the past alive. So when you want to move it still reminds you. This one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind. The Bible says there is no man who stands on a block and looks back to his feet. Remember Lot's wife. She was connected to the past. Her exodus had begun to come and they were asked to look, set their face like a flint, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher. And while she was there, something about her past. And just for turning back, she became salt. The past can keep you in one place forever. Just because she turned back, she became salt. What is there in turning back everything? It can stagnate your life forever. I prophesy one more time. Whatever has made Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of 
Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence. for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. Salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lekon? Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. This lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's hand. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has to be Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you. Something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is
This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Sadia, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. One. She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. Yes. You are a sincere person. Now, what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. August. That's what stand correct, up. That's what they correct, told me. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ukechuku. Is it Ukechuku or Ukechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Obochuku or Obochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? What should I tell you, Kathy? Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kathy. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been there. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Cape. Oh, you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. You were part of the committee people yes. there. Yes. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man. By the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ.
came to receive impartation, what you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, he will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The blessing is coming. You want something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? I'm coming from State. State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the God that I serve lift you. May the God that I serve honor you. Your help had is in Abuja. We will locate you and we will help you and bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabalakatabalata.
these children look small here, but I'm seeing. Hold on, hold on. They are here. One is who is this one? These ones are your children. I'm looking at this one. Is she married? She is married. Because I'm seeing a ring. And I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years. Two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. No woman. There's no woman. Call the person's name now. Huh? No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with the child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You yes, believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Yes, the name of Jesus become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, meet him. He's the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Peter. In the name of Jesus, I believe that you are blessed. Mama. Back sometimes. Diabetes. Hold on. Ulcer. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plateau State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. Is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and all sad. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power. Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence.
deliverance of any spirit. Please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One. to 11 now as I'm praying the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting I'm seeing this is this is some demonic diabolic thing I'm not saying the child is bad I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me father wherever this child is I pray for our children now whether it is an initiation whether it is anything occultic and I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ wherever that little child is I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother. The power of God is going to come on him now. Overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow 2. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow 2. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. 
the fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to stop him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Look at me. Jesus said, He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
Because it does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details, we'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department, and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying, you need to keep building your spirit, you need to be taught the word of God, and by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here, will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me somebody. I 
outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let there be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we curse it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are watching. Who are sick in body overflow one, two, three inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga, and promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands 
on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. outside I know they are still praying for you. Just connect by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Do we still have more? Please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now.
those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction outside make sure you are connecting receive encounters that give you direction in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata bakata kata kata, shegete kete kete, mabrato so doko doko shegete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I declare and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and Lord's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution. 
vision right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command them, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Whatever has destroyed your prayer life so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I found those calls to come back alive. I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Access to the operation of the world. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Let it be yours now in the name of Jesus. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Capacity to do impossible things. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, one by one, beginning from tonight, the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves, I command everything that should be in your life and has left you, the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark, I command you to draw your blessings to your life now. to your life now. Listen. Noah did not go to look for the animals. He just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command. I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time. It only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again. Between now and the next month's miracle service, let there be strange testimonies of restoration. Strange testimonies of restoration. Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. 
I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle. Looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family I cause accidents I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again 